Hello Booktube, it's Lane Cooper here and it is day 16 of NaNoWriMo, but to be honest I don't feel like vlogging. I'm using that term even though, I mean, can you even call what I'm doing vlogging? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm stretching that, but if there's one thing this experience has taught me it's that I'm not a vlogger. I'm just not, which is a good thing to learn about yourself, I would say. It's like 7 o'clock at night on day 16. I haven't started writing yet. One of those reasons is that I need to write the end of the sci-fi short story I've been working on and I'm not entirely sure how I want it to end and, and I don't want to rush it because despite every single time I've told you to just keep writing if you know you, you get a writer's block this month for me that isn't necessarily good advice instead of keep writing on that project or just like throw something at it I would prefer to just switch to a different project and work on that for a little while and then come back to my other project when I have come up with a solution for whatever is blocking me but that's also because I have so many projects going on at any given time I can do that and stay productive. That's not necessarily good advice though for people who may be doing NaNoWriMo for their first time you know. Do as I suggest and not as I do. The other thing is that to be frank I have so much editing to get done on Blood and Bone 4 it's making me a little anxious and so I would rather do some editing on that and just not do a ton of writing today. I'm probably going to go try to write about 500 words or maybe 550 words. That way I get up to my next uh, whole round five digit number in my total word count for NaNoWriMo and then I'm going to do some editing. But before I go and do that I figured we could have a semi-useful chat maybe since I said I was going to do more of these. Grab a drink. What I want to talk about is something I mentioned I think in one of my pre NaNoWriMo videos where I talked about how you can read as many how to write guides as you want but the most important thing for you to do is to understand your own creative process and so I want to revisit that idea by talking about how I have developed a system for outlining my books and it took a while to get the system but now it works really well for me even though it's kind of cumbersome maybe. So first of all I will leave a link down to a website page below called The Lester Dent Pulp Paper Master Fiction Plot. <laughs> that's a that's a mouthful. Basically it's like this totally random I don't know if you want to call it an article about the Lester Dent method of outlining short stories and you're probably going like how is that relevant to anything and I mean some of the information on this is not relevant for one reason or another being you know like this is to outline pulp stories that are all kind of supposed to be interchangeable and it's for short stories that are supposed to be 5,000 words and that's it. But the concept of the kind of four act structure is something that really clicked with my brain and really clicks with the way I sort of outline. I don't consider myself a strict outliner and I don't mind deviating from my outlines but I do outline quite a lot and I use this concept this Lester Dent concept of basically a four act structure. I do all of my outlining by hand in a notebook and I have tons of these and I've been using this style of composi composition notebook for literal years. So this one I started using in the fall of 2016 this one is from July of 2013. I found notes for a story I was actually uh, looking for that I didn't realize was in this notebook. The first stage of planning for me is that initial genesis of an idea and I always write it down <laughs> and usually it becomes a page in one of these notebooks with just some sort of identifying title and it could be like a title idea or it could be something like Demon Hunter slash Wolf Fantasy AU right here or it could be like an actual title suggestion that I did not use like this one The Ghosts That Bind Us. That title is not the final title. The final title is Sanguine Solution which is the actual title for BNB4. And so this I believe is actually the original Genesis page for BNB4 that I wrote back in 2015. It just has like a line for the theme. It has bullet points of plots 
that I wanted to use. This was some more of me brainstorming title ideas. And then this section here is me actually expanding these bullet points. Flip forward a couple of pages. I did do a little bit more brainstorming for the plot, but then I realized after writing a couple thousand words, maybe like 10 or 10, 10,000 words or so, I didn't actually want to work on that story next. And I started brainstorming a spinoff series, which became the Profane series. So this was me just word vomiting about the two protagonists for the Profane series. And yes, I do all of my notes very out of order. I then continued actually outlining the Profane series and I got completely distracted doing this. Again, with character ideas and descriptions, this is a plot element map that I drew. You probably can't see it very well on the camera, but, but once I decided to start working on something full time, I start doing more detailed outlines. Again, with a lot of just brainstorming free writes, actually. So what we see here is a brainstorming free write for the book that became medium rare, which is book one in the profane series where I'm just talking about things that I want to happen, how the characters are feeling, why these things are important or how they're, they're invested, the characters are invested in the plot, etc. what things can happen. On the next page, again, I do another one of these bullet point lists of plot ideas. And usually I try to start with the biggest plot at the top. And then here I actually started doing brainstorming again, brainstorming free rights, where I just talk about the emotional arcs of the characters, the two protagonists. So this one we have Lachlan's and we're just talking about all the things that have happened to him to bring him to his, emo the emotional position he's in at the beginning of the book. And then how the things that are, are going to happen in the book are going to affect him and also talking about what his motivations are. Now, because I actually wrote this book or I started working on this book two years ago, I hadn't finalized my system. Uh, and so there isn't a good example of the next step that I do for the profane series, but I will show you the next step I took when I was writing Olympia Necromage this summer, which is the book that will be coming out next year. And that step ties back into the Lester Dent for act me method. The first thing I do after I've got all this brainstorm about what are the plots, what are the emotional arcs, who are the characters, and why do they care about the plot? Because I think the two things that writers often struggle with early on in their writing careers and that are critical to a book is your conflict and the stakes. And so for a mystery, I think the conflict is pretty easy. You know, it's to solve the case, but sometimes figuring out a compelling stakes for your characters isn't always as cut and dry, especially when the conflict resolution is their job. So after I've done all that brainstorming, I will sit down and I'll make this and I'll insert a better picture of this here. And it's a word count timeline. So because I roughly know approximately how many words I want for like a full length novel, I can split it up into four arcs. Because one of the things that I think was really fascinating about the Lester Dent method and why I like it more than the three act structure, which puts a predominant emphasis on act two, the middle, is that if you just have this huge third, second act, that's this, this, the middle and it's like the bulk of the book, it can feel really overwhelming. You're like, how do I come up with enough stuff to fill that space in? But the Lester Dent method essentially takes that second act and breaks it into two pieces. And for me, mentally, that is a much more manageable thing because each of those pieces, you need to make them equally compelling. You can't have just a big sluggish middle where maybe a few interesting things happen, but then you're just kind of beefing up the, the total package of the book. I don't know. And maybe that's not how other people think of the three act structure when they think of it, but that's how I have always thought of it and why I always really struggled with middles. It wasn't until I started, I broke down the middle into two parts where you had to make both parts really compelling and both parts had to have, you know, twists and turns and had to put your, you had to raise the stakes twice in that middle portion before you even get to the, the last act. That just really helped me break down the book, 
especially longer books, into manageable pieces, if that makes sense. So I'll start with this and I'll break it up into four acts and I will equally apportion a number of words to those acts. Now, th those word counts aren't strict. They do fluctuate over the course of actually constructing the book. This is just planning. <laughs> and then I'll write notes because the thing about the Lester Dent method is it's talking about a short story. So at the end of the act, something big is supposed to happen because in a short story, you know, it's like 1500 words and then you're presented with the conflict and then you write another 15 words at the end of that, your hero needs to be in danger. And then at the, you write another 1500 words and at the end of that, you bury your hero in trouble and disaster. And at the, then you write the last 1500 words and you give a satisfying resolution. So, I always try to come up with what is going to be that conflict or that twist or that burying my character in trouble element. I've got three different major plot points that are supposed to fulfill those roles. And those just kind of give me a general idea of the scope of the conflict and the stakes that are going into the book. After I have that, I can start going chapter by chapter outlining yes this is this is how detailed i get outlining what needs to happen in each chapter so that we can build to each of those individual critical moments in the book i'll go ahead and insert a picture of this because this is actually quite detailed chapter by chapter outlining for medium rare where i literally have chapter one and what happens in chapter two and what happens in chapter three and what happens and these things can shift and move around in the course of writing the book as you realize that maybe you need to add some stuff or maybe one of these chapters needs to be broken up or maybe one of these chapters needs to be combined or rearranged you know but this is just a guideline to help me understand what i need to be doing and this is one of the ways that i'm able to write a decent number of words per hour because i always sit down with an idea of what I want to accomplish in any writing session. I usually try to estimate how many words per chapter. You can't see this, but there are little brackets with approximate word count estimates so that again, I can keep, because I'm always keeping that four act structure in my head saying, okay, I need something really crazy to happen. For example, around the 12,000, 13,000 word mark or the 26, 27,000 word mark. And so then, when I started working on B&B 4 again, I sat down and I wrote a list of themes and motifs that I wanted to touch on in the course of the book. I did hit a point where I had some writer's block and it was right about here <laughs> in my outline because I took a break off from the chapter by chapter outline to write down facts about what was going on that the reader didn't know about and that I didn't want to tell the reader about but that I needed to understand to continue the story. And admittedly that book did end up being like 104,000 words instead of 70,000 which was my original plan but that happens. And so all of this is not to say that you should mimic what I do at all. I really just want to, wanted to give you a snapshot because I think it's kind of, it might seem a little strange. It might seem incredibly convoluted or maybe redundant or maybe too analytical. I don't know. I don't think it's very analytical or very organized. I'm just such a like messy scatterbrained person that applying those words to a system I use seems not accurate. But the point is, it's my system and it's taken years to refine down to what it is now but you can see from this notebook that i showed you portions of this notebook from 2015 and this notebook that i'm still using right now that it's a system that once i figured out that's what worked for my brain my creative process and the way I think about stories and the way that I am most productive because again in some of those screenshots I will hopefully have inserted you'll see that I I mark things out when I get them done because I'm a very much like to-do list person I feel very satisfied when I can mark something as finished and so that is an inbuilt reward system in my method that all helps me continue to work and be productive me refining the system into something that works for me is not it's not something I copied from someone else it's not something I 
realized overnight. It's something that I developed over the course of literally years and literally multiple books. But it's something, it's a system that now really facilitates me doing NaNoWriMo without really much of a problem at all. Like, you know, I, I think I've mentioned this before. This is one of the chillest, most relaxed NaNoWriMo's I've done ever. Even though I've completed NaNoWriMo multiple times, I usually have some stress involved and usually I have to have, I have a couple of like massive catch up days where I like really have to bust my ass because I've fallen behind. And right now I'm just like, eh. I've been ahead of schedule every single day this month, which is great. Some of it has to do with my system. And so for you, if you're really serious about this writing thing, keep at it. Try different things. Find things, methods, systems, whatever, that help you, that make you feel more creative, that help you be more productive. Try doing them again. Try replicating those systems. I think that's all I have to say. Hopefully this has been helpful. If not, I hope it's been entertaining. A peek inside the mind of someone with terrible handwriting who still insists on handwriting. Thanks for watching. I hope your NaNoWriMo is going great and I'll see you tomorrow for day 17. Bye.